Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Oh, there is another uh, question Wahhabis are going to go crazy with. Yes. So, spiritually, of course, he's there. Yom Rashid is there, spiritually. He's always guiding you and he's always protecting you. Because the spirit, what is a murshid is not like us. What is a prophet is not like us. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Is the prophet always with us, protecting us and guiding us? Yes, he is. In the ayat of Lakat Jakum, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, He is amongst you, He is within you. In that same ayat, He's saying, He is what? He is compassionate and He worries about you. There is no time limit there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying only when he is alive physically in this world that he's going to be compassionate and worrying about you. He's saying that that is across the board, that is mutlaq, from the beginning to the end. From the time that he was a prophet when Adam alayhi salam was between water and clay to post-eternity, he is always worried about us. And he is very worried about the believers and gentle with the believers and is tough with the unbelievers. This is not just separating people, it's separating belief and unbelief. It's not separating Muslim, Jew, Christian, it's separating belief and unbelief. It's separating belief. And there are so many hypocrites and hypocrisy is not higher than disbelief. Hypocrisy it is lower than disbelief. To be a munafik, it is worse than being an unbeliever. Which means we are looking for kafir, but they are worse inside of us, amongst us. There is worse than kafir. And what is that called? To be a hypocrite. And the Prophet said to us, when he is worried, what do you think he's worried? What it means he's worried? You think he's worried like you and me, sitting down and, oh, I'm so worried, I'm so worried. You think Prophet Subhan uh, said to us, the Habibullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him the powers of this dunya and ahirat just to be worried and not to be anything. He is uh, a warner and he is the one who gives good news. What is that? Bashir and Nazir. He is Bashir. He gives good news and he is Nazir. He gives warning. And this is from Awal to Ahir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him that power. It is not coming from him. That ayat that says that he is worried. And inside that ayat meaning that he is guiding and he's protecting and he's giving a warning. He's inside of us, he's amongst us, he's inside of us. He's Hazir and Nazir. This is Ahli Sunnat Akida. If you're out of this Akida, you're out of the Ahli Sunnat way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him that power. He's not taking the power from himself. So those ones who are walking in the footsteps of the Prophet والسلام, you think it is so difficult for them to be protecting and guiding us spiritually in our journey? Those who are representing him. You think it is difficult, it is impossible? That time you will slowly understand who your Shaykh is, where he has been your life, where he was in pre-eternity, where he's going to be in post-eternity. The question is not whether they are with us. The question is whether we are with them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us, correct? But don't be like a square head Wahhabi that is saying there is no hidden meaning to the Quran. If it says Allah is there, Allah is there. So that means what? Allah is inside of us. Subhanahu wa ta'ala is inside of us. He's split into billions and billions and he's inside of us. That they're saying, Allah sits on the throne means He sits on the throne, sitting like this, like where we sit. Like that, uh, one 
who has a deviate. Ibn Taymiyyah that says Allah comes down to the paradises just like I'm coming down from the mimbar physically. It is not what it's meaning. So we cannot be looking at this with our ego. We have to look at this with those ones whose eyes that they are filled with the nur of Allah and the nur of the Prophet والسلام, and they are explaining to us. Now there is a very big disease because everyone is saying major scholars east and west new kind of Wahhabism all kind of Wahhabism saying we reject tradition there is no Mezhab. New kind of bigger evil kind of Wahhabism saying we accept Mezhabs, but now there has to be a new Mezhab. Because whatever that has been provided for 1,300 years, it is not enough for us. So we don't have to follow the Mezhabs. We just leave all the mazhab and make into a new mazhab. The doors of ishtihad must open for the conditions of this world because 1300 years, because the Prophet, because Allah did not see that such a thing is going to happen 1400 years down the line. Thinking like that is going to bring you to a kufr. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, today I have perfected your religion. And he has given that understanding of perfection, not to everyone too to those ones who are perfect. And we must follow those ones who are perfect. These ones who are saying now we have to make a new mazhab, we have to make a new ishtihad, we don't have to follow anything, we cannot be in taklid anymore. We cannot be following anymore. Who are they following? Re Islam is a religion of taklid. Islam it is a religion of imitation. Who are we imitating? Allah and His Prophet You don't want to imitate Allah and His Prophet Who are you imitating then? Shaitan and your ego You're saying no I want it to be real So you're making a hidden shirk now You want to be Allah And you want to be a Prophet This is what you're saying If you don't want imitation You want the real thing what is the real thing? The real thing is Allah and His Prophet. So you're declaring yourself Allah. You're declaring yourself a Prophet. Because the Sahabi Kiram, none of them say, we have to have the real thing. Everyone is following and submitting to the Prophet ﷺ. And the Tabi'in say, we don't even submit to the Prophet because we are removed from him. We follow those ones who submit to him. So now, in the name of Ahli Sunnah, in the name of traditional Islam, and they like to mention Hujjatul Islam Hazrat Ghazali Al Ghazali to bring up to say that we need another Al Ghazali now These times we need another Al Ghazali who can bridge the gap between Wahhabism Ahli Sunnah, Sufism and all these other things Because he did in his time To bridge the gap between Sharia minded people And Tasawuf minded people And this and this and everything in it Another big confusion that they are making And always they are not They are hiding that point That Hazrat Al-Ghazali They show that with all that Islamic knowledge He lost his faith they say that Because with all that knowledge He lost his faith And no scholar All the scholars of today You gather them together What knowledge they have Is not even a drop In the oceans of Hujjat al-Islam's knowledge But they dare to say That they are better than him Because he belonged to a mazhab Didn't he? Or did he start his own mazhab? He was following didn't he? So you want only not to be uh, original, you also want to be the Ghazalis of this time that is opposite to the spirit of Hujjatul Islam at that time. 
But you're mixing everything up. You're even mixing the conditions that time and today. That time, Hujat al-Islam, there was a Hilafat, there was Shariat ruling. Now, there is no Shariat. Islam is not ruling. When the ship is sinking down, there's not the time to talk about the engineering of the ship or the architecture of the ship. It's not to be talking about the ocean that the ship is going to be on. It's not to talk about the stars, how it guides the ship. It's not to talk about anything. The ship is going down. The knowledge that is beneficial to you is how to save yourself when the ship is going down. But the scholars, they are chasing after their own tail in these days. And they say, we must destroy the taklid. So they are hiding certain things. They say, Hazrat al-Ghazali, Hujat al-Islam, yes, he lost his faith, but how did he find? They like to whitewash, they like to make that very simple. They say, oh, he, he took some time, he meditated, then he found his faith. Is that what he said? He said, woe to me, destruction to me, if I had not sat in the presence of the Ahli Tasawuf. And no one can sit in the presence of the Ahli Tasawuf without following and taking bayat from a sheikh. So he found tariqat, he found a way. And that saved his religion. But they hide that part. This is the time of the Jaliyat anyway. Everywhere there is smoke, there is Dukhan. Do you understand? Run away from such confusion, inshallah Rahman. Hold on tightly to those ones who have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is not introducing new things. May Allah keep our faith safe, inshallah, and protect us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah wake us up. May Allah bring down the evil and bring down the tyranny from this world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us to become sincere ones and to gather all the sincere ones together. May Allah forgive us, forgive me and bless you. Al-Fatiha. <laughs>